Good afternoon. My name is Magdalena Mendoza. I am the program manager for the Center for Leadership, Academic, and Student Success, which is a Title V initiative here at Lone Star College Tomball. I'm really excited that y'all are here. Um, so a little bit of background about me real quick is I was in your seat not too long ago. Back in 2007, I was actually a student here at Lone Star College Tomball. Um, I started taking my basics here. I completed my basics. I transferred on to the four-year university, received my bachelor's, and then I decided that higher education was something I really wanted to pursue. So I attended Texas A&M University where I graduated recently in May with my master's degree. And now I'm back here at Lone Star College Tomball because I really wanna give back to the community that helped me get my best start in my educational and my professional career. Um, so that's a little bit about my background. So the Leading the Pack speaker series is something new that we're starting off this fall semester and we're really excited about this. Um, this speaker series is going to address pretty much some of the concerns that you may have as a first time in college student, as a first generation college student. Um, raise your hand, and you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to, but raise your hand if you're a first generation college student. Okay. So the, uh, the big majority of this room is first generation college students, and that's awesome because like the title of our speaker series, we're leading the pack for our families and for our friends to what it means to go to college, what it means to be professional. So this speaker series is gonna bring in speakers who are going to inspire, to motivate you, provide you strategies and techniques on how to be a successful college student while you're here at Lone Star College Tomball and beyond. So. That's a little bit about the Leading the Pack speaker series, who I am. So I wanna go ahead and introduce our guest speaker for today. His, doc his name is Dr. Luis Bonjuan. He's an Associate Professor of Higher Education Administration and the Director of the IDEAL uh, Project, which is Investing in Diversity, Equity, Access, and Learning Research Project at, in the Department of Educational Administration and Human Resource Development in the College of Education and Human Development at Texas A&M University. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, he's received numerous awards at Texas A&M University. He will probably tell you a little bit about some of his research accomplishments that he's been able to uh, fulfill the past couple years. And I'm just so excited to have him here at our campus and kind of share with you some of the research he does, um, as he calls it, me search. So. With that being said, if we can give a nice, warm welcome to Dr. Luis Bon Juan so we can get started. Howdy. Okay, we gotta work on this because I'm coming from Texas A&M. If you're gonna be a Texas A&M uh, Aggie, you're gonna have to work on this. So when I say howdy, you have to say howdy. 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 Okay, y'all getting a little bit better. So anybody have a cell phone? Anybody have a cell phone? Okay, get your cell phones out because here's what you're gonna have to do. I'm giving you homework already. You see, I'm just learning how to tweet so y'all gonna learn how to start tweeting about me, okay? So first thing you need to do, tell your friends, tweet your friends, you need to be here. You need to tell them, just come on down because he's going crazy and you need to see what this guy's talking about. So text your friends, tell them, come on down, come to wherever this room is, I don't even know where this room is, tell them, just come see me, just hook up with me, let's come on over, right? So tell them right now. So everybody get on your phone, tell them right now. Say, come on down. Do y'all have friends that should be here? Do you think we should be here? You listen to it because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some good information. So text them, tell them to come on down. So let me tell you why I'm here today. Why I'm here today is not to talk about dry, boring research. Why I'm here today is not talking about wh why I'm so important and why I'm doing all these things. Why I'm here is because I'm here because of you. More importantly, because the time is now to talk about what we need to do as a community to ensure your academic success. And more importantly, my job is to give you information that I believe is gonna help you be successful. Now, the last time I checked, the reason why you're in college is because you wanna graduate, right? Anybody raise your hand? If you wanna graduate from college, right? Are we good? All right, excellent. For the students who are in, all those students in the back, if they're students, y'all need to come on up if you're all students. Come on up, if not, then it's okay. If you want to, come on down, come on down, that's good. All right, that's kind of tip number one, get in front of the professor, right? So I teach classes at A&M, and more importantly, I, I strongly believe in helping students achieve their absolute best. And so let me tell you a little bit about myself. First of all, I have to say my shout outs, my thank yous. 
right? I want to shout out to the Community College, of course, Lone Star Tomball, and obviously Miss Magdalena Martinez. Magdalena actually took several classes from me, and she was actually one of my students. And it is amazing to see how one of your students goes off and becomes successful. And I see incredible, incredible things in front of her future. And so I'm very grateful to have her invite me come here, and more importantly, to talk to you. I want to thank, obviously, the faculty members who are participating in this uh, series, and more critically, the administrators who actually support this work. So I really believe it's important to give shout outs to people who are doing this work and who are supporting this, leading the pack. An institution that invests in their students means that they're investing in your success. So I want to give them thanks for that. So let's give a little round of applause for them because they, they, they're, they're paying for the room, they're paying for everything for you. They're doing all this for you. So let's, let's show them our gratitude in terms of what they've done. But I'll tell you something real quick. You're probably wondering, well, who is this guy? You know, he's a professor at a and I get it, but who is he? I want to share something with you because I think it's important. We're all on our own journey. We're all on our own pathway. And let me tell you a little bit about me. So this is me. Just want to point out, I was a little kid. I was a little chunky. I just want to point that out. I still have the hair. I just want to point out, I still have the good hair, right? But that was me. That's Martha and Luis, Graciela, Luis, and Jorge. I was a Cuban immigrant. You know, we have that conversation about DACA right now going on. DACA. I was one of those kids. I came here undocumented. I was one of those kids, not showing, not knowing where I'm going to be. So I understand the challenges of what it means to be an immigrant that doesn't speak English. Martha and Luis still kind of speak that broken English. How many people are, how many students were the, in, the interpreter for their family? Raise your hand if you were the interpreter. Yep. Mommy, papi, no, this thing, can't even see that. And you have to start talking to them and, and you're switching languages and everything. That was me. But how did this kid, how did Luis, become a faculty member, a tenured faculty at AM? How did I go from, from, from here to there? What happened? What did I do? Last time I checked, if you want to be a millionaire, who do you talk to? A millionaire or a broke, your broke friends? A millionaire, right? Okay, y'all, y'all, look, y'all, this, is, this, is, this is 101, keeping it simple, right? Y'all smiling? I'm just trying to keep this simple. You want to talk to a millionaire. So if you want to talk to a college graduate, do you want to talk to your friends that dropped out or do you want to talk to a college graduate, right? I'm a college graduate. And the research I do is about students going to college. That's what I do. So I do research about you. And as Mike Dillon has told my thunder already, I don't do research. I do me-search. I do research about students that look like me, that don't know how to speak English, had to take ESL classes. They didn't know what it means, what college meant. When I went to college, I thought if you were a doctor, that you were a medical doctor. And that's the only kind of doctor you could be. I didn't know that there was like PhDs and EDDs, I didn't know any of that. And somehow, I became a professor. And so, I, I, I was an immigrant, I became a professor, I started doing research, research that people wanted to know about. People wanted to know more about Latino students. And somehow, some way, I got to meet this guy. How did that happen? How did, how did Luisito, Godito, how did his guy get to meet this guy? How did that happen? Okay, so let me tell you the story. This, was hap- this happened about two years ago, almost to the day. Two years ago to the day, I got to meet the President of the United States. It was the craziest, craziest thing I've ever could have imagined. It's like those, you hear those stories, you're like, that ain't true, that ain't true. Well, I have my cell phone, so it is true. So I have, I have, I have, I have, I have the first selfie with the President. And I tell you, I had 90 seconds. You know, you have 90 seconds to meet somebody kind of cool, and what, what are you going to tell them after 90 seconds? So I had 90 seconds where it was just me and him talking. There were a bunch of people. First of all, I don't know who this guy was. I don't know. He was just photobombing. He was just kind of like, I don't know what he was doing, but he was just looking at me and kind of like weird, creepy kind of look. So I was like, I know what he was doing. But I got to talk to the president. And I had 90 seconds to talk to the president about me. And he said, so, who are you? I said, Mr. President, my name is Luis Pon Juan. I'm a faculty member at Texas A&M in, in the state of Texas. And I'm a Cuban immigrant. And never in a million years will my parents ever believe 
that their son, Luisito, would get to meet the President of the United States. And I do research on Latino students, Latino males. And I'm honored to be here to talk about my research to you, to the Vice President. I got to meet the Vice President. I'm, I'm really honored. And you know what he said? He said, first of all, thank you. Thank you for coming. I was like, no, thank you for inviting me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's really cool that I got invited. But thank you. But he said, what you're doing in the state of Texas, follow me here, what you're doing in the state of Texas, we're going to be looking at because what you're doing in Texas is what we need to do across the country. So when he tells me that, I'm kind of freaking out because I'm thinking the president wants me to do my work because everybody across the country is looking at us on what we're doing in Texas. So I'll be honest with you. All of you in this room are examples of what we need to be doing on the larger scale in the nation. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute because guess what? Latino students are the fastest growing ethnic group. We're going to talk about that in a moment. And so I have this picture, and this is the funny story here I'm going to tell you. I had this picture, and I don't know about you, but my parents, Martha and Louise, heard, I told them, I went to the White House. And they said, ay, que bueno, mi hijo fue presidente, ve presidente, que muy bueno, que bueno. I said, yeah, and I have a picture. And I gave it to them. I gave them a picture, printed it off, printed the picture. They took that picture, made a hundred copies, and gave it to all of their family and all their friends because they wanted to brag. You know how our parents brag? They were, they were like throwing like serious major shade on the, other, on the Latino community. They were like, look at my son. What about yours? They're like, what are you, what's your son doing? My son's meeting the president. What about yours? And I was like, mommy, why are you saying that? Please don't. But they had a guyo. They, they had a lot of pride in their son. They wanted their sons to be successful. They wanted their son to live the American dream. And that's what I want for you. You may not get to meet the president, but you will be a college graduate. And that's why I'm here, here to help you understand and learn. Why do I say that? Because I said earlier, the Hispanic population in America is the fastest growing. In 1980, it was 6.8, 1999 percent. In 12, 12, 2000, it was 12.5. And as recently as 2012, it was 17 percent and growing. That's about 54 million Latinos and growing. In fact, when you start thinking about it, about 600 Latino youth turn 18 each year, almost equivalent to the population of Vermont, year after year after year. So when we start thinking about Latino students, and we start thinking about who you represent, you represent the future of America. So when the president asked me, what is Texas doing? I got to come up with an answer because boom, there it is. America can't be apart from Latinos. Latinos are part of America. Why? Because fast is growing. They're the largest percentage, the largest ethnic population, larger than African American, the largest. They're the most diverse. We have from different countries, and we have 64% of all Latinos are from Mexico. Y'all need to start writing these little numbers down. 64% of all Latinos are from Mexico. And they have the greatest economic impact, the amount of money that we represent. And so the reality is, is that the Latino student population increases, increases create a new demographic reality. This is, just the, this is just the reality of how we think about Latinos in Texas and beyond that highlights the need for greater awareness of their educational experiences in American education. In other words, I want to know what you do in college so that I can make college more successful for you. That's what I'm here to learn. And so when you take a look at the state of Texas, so here's Texas, right? Texas represents about 8% of the whole population of the United States. But the Texas population in 2014, it's about 20, 26 million, right? Look at Hispanics, 39%. That number's grown. It's grown in comparison to Texas and in comparison to the United States. But when you take a look at who's enrolled, only 33% of the Latinos are enrolled in college, or a almost 6% difference between this number and that number. So we need to get more Latinos to go to college. How many people have friends 
who dropped out of high school? Raise your hand. All, all of y'all probably raised your hand. That know somebody that dropped out of high school. How many friends know that decided not to go to college? Said, uh, college is not for me. College ain't for me. That ain't for me. Right? Been there. I have the same friends. But they're not meeting the president. I have the same friends. And they're not making good money. And so when I say this, you need to start recognizing how amazing you really are. And you're thinking, what do you mean? I'm a community college student at Lone Star Town Ball. What are you getting at? The fact of the matter is, only about 30% of Latinos actually finish high school. So you already beat the odds. Only 10% have a bachelor's degree. Let me, let, me re, let me flip that over for you. 90% of Latino students over the age of 24 and 35, 90% do not have a bachelor's degree. Did, did, I just, did I break that down for you? Magdalena, where's Magdalena? Magdalena, and I've shared this with her many, many times. Only 3%, 3% Latina women have a master's degree or higher. Only 3% of master. So Magdalena represents the top 97 percentile. Does that make sense? So when you think, oh, you know, that's just, that's just Magdalena Martinez. No, she's in the top 3% in our country. So when I talk about why it's important and why I want you to be successful, it clearly points out the more education you have, the better jobs you get. The more education you have, the less likely you to be unemployed. The better education you have, the better health care you're going to have access to. The better education you have, the nicer homes you're going to have. I just go on and on and on. So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm kind of psycho about making sure you graduate from high school and graduate from college. I'm psycho about it because I'm not going to stop because I know how important it is. I recognize the importance of that. Males, only 9.4%. Latino males. Women, about 11.3%. 11.3, that's pretty good. That's 89%, 90%. One out of every 10 women has a college degree. Wrap your head around that. One out of every 10 have a college degree. So the fact that you're here talking in here about going to college and finishing college already tells me that you're going to beat the odds. I want everyone in this room to graduate from Tomball. And then to go from Tomball to a community college, from a I mean from community college to a four-year institution, from a four-year institution, and get a job. Some people say, well, I just want to get a community college degree. Great, do that. But finish. Finish. And you're probably wondering, what does that mean? We're going to talk about it in a minute. The reality is our national state economic prosperity and future generations of an educated workforce we require that we enroll and graduate more Latino students through Texas post-secondary institutions. Basically, in other, for, in other words, for Texas to be successful, we need more of you to graduate. It's a bottom simple as that. If we want more companies to come to Texas, we need more Latinos to get college degrees. That simple. A company's not going to want to come here if you're not college educated. So getting a degree from Tumball is your ticket to a great job. Right? And so, when you start looking at the attainment rates, here's what I was telling you earlier. Here's Texas. 22 or 23% of Texans do not have, have some college and no degree. We rank 18th in the country. Associate's degree, we rank 46th in the country. We're at the bottom, at the bottom of AA and AS degree completion. The fact that you're here right now and listening to me tells me that you're already going to beat the odds. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Because I don't want to talk over your head. Does this make sense? This is a low number, right? 6.5 is a low number. We need more of you to graduate. We're at the bottom of the rankings in our country, in Texas. We have more Latinos not going to college. Bachelor's degrees, 18%. Graduate professional, 9.3%. The fact is, when you start thinking about who goes to college, here's a little schematic for you. 
out of 100 eighth graders, 100 eighth graders in 2004, only 68 actually graduate. Of those 68, only 54 actually go to college. 54. 46 out of the 100 don't even go to college. So again, the fact that you're here, you see how you're already beating the odds? You see what I'm saying? This is what I'm getting at. I want you to recognize that the fact that you are actually here in this little bar right here, you're already beating the odds. And then more importantly, of the 54, only 20 actually finish, receive some kind of higher education degree. One of those 20 gets a, a, a certificate. Four of those 20, which is where you are right now, get an associate's degree, and 15 get a bachelor's degree or higher. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. This is all I'm trying to say. I need you to get a degree. I need you to get a degree. And you're like, Dr. P, Dr. Bon Juan, I feel you. I want to get a degree too. But how? How? Because when we start thinking about this, this is what the state says. We want Latino students in 2015 to have, we have 439,000 degrees. We only have 300,000. There's a gap. We're not, we're not meeting the bar. Back then, we're not meeting the bar now. We need more of you to graduate. And so the fact is, too few enroll and even fewer graduate. So I don't know about you. I'm going to take a water break. How many people are feeling kind of down right now, kind of like, man, you bumming me out? This is kind of, you're kind of like depressing me. How many of y'all, come on, y'all be honest. Yo, how, how many people are like, dang, I know it was that bad, right? It's like, oh my gosh, seriously? And you want me to graduate? How am I going to do that? You're kind of bumming me out, telling me there's no way I'm going to graduate. I would not be here this afternoon if I had to give you a plan. So get out a sheet of paper. Everybody who doesn't have a sheet of paper, get out a sheet of paper. I'm going to break it down for you right now. I'm going to give you what I believe is the pathway or the road to success. The fact is, there's a new road for Latino student success. In other words, if you're going to be successful, i got to give you a, a, a recipe. I'm going to give you a plan. So everybody got, everybody got a piece of paper. Every student needs to have a sheet of paper. And y'all need to get ready because you're going to take notes. Y'all in class now. You're in my, you're in my world now. That's right. My daily now, you getting like flashbacks from class now? Okay, good, right? So here's the deal. I'm going to tell you what the plan is. Because last time I checked, last time I checked, I'm a college graduate, right? So I'm going to tell you what you need to do to be a college graduate, okay? The fact is, I got to give you some, I got to give you some nuggets. So nuggets, like we're starting a brand new day. Y'all like my pictures, by the way? I, you like my, this ain't no boring PowerPoint. Right? This is my pictures, right? We're starting a brand new day. In other words, we're going to tell you some truths about success. Here's some truths about success that nobody wants to tell you, but I'm just going to break it down for you. We're kind of starting out. I'm warming you up. Here's some truths about success. Number one, we're not promised tomorrow. Every day is a gift. And every day we have to get up and, and, and do the hustle, right? Everybody day, every day we have to do the hustle. We're not promised tomorrow. The fact is, we're not promised easy. When I went to college, I worked at McDonald's. Anybody worked at McDonald's? Anybody work at my, remember McDonald's peeps? All right, McDonald's, all right, give, me, give me some love. Give me some McDonald's love. I worked that grill, yes, right? I, I can make a mean Egg McMuffin, watch out. I worked at McDonald's. I worked in a, an emergency room. When I worked in the emergency room, I saw a lot of kids that looked like me getting shot. And I worked the, the night shift. And I realized at East Jefferson Hospital, I realized that I didn't want to be that kid. I realized that I didn't want to get shot. But I worked at overnight shift. And I knew that I had to work two and three jobs because I had to help my little brother Jorge because my mom said, you got to take care of your little brother. You got to help your little brother out. So it's not easy. How many people are working while they're going to college? Raise your hand. It's not easy. It's not easy. Right? We're not promised success. They didn't say, Luis, you're so good looking. Thank you very much. 
you're so good looking, we're going to give you a degree because you're good looking. No, don't fool yourself. No one's going to give you anything. You're going to have to work hard for it. You're going to have to work hard every day. But you have to do it every day. Success is earned daily. Little things. It's not, about, it's not about you doing something miraculous and winning the lottery, and then you win a college degree. It's every day. The hustle is every day. And so as we move forward, I have another picture here. What's this picture to remind you of? What is this? Time, little what? Like, like time pass, like a little stopwatch. So click, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, every day. And so when we start thinking about this, I'm going to tell you, here's the plan. We got to prepare. We got to leverage. We got to take action. It's all about time, and it's, it's all about never. So I'm going to break them all down for you, okay? So we're, each one of these, we're going to talk about all five of these, and I'll break it down for you. How are we doing on time? Oh, we got good time. We're good. We're good. All right? I'm giving you basically the recipe about how you're going to be successful at Lone Star Tomball. I'm about to give you the recipe of what you need to do. And I'm going to give you homework. I'm already giving you homework. Madalena, you don't have to do the homework because you already did my homework. But you students, y'all got homework already. You're like, dang it. Yes, you're going to have homework. All right. You got to prepare yourself for success. Let me tell you why. It all begins mentally. It begins mentally, meaning that you got to mentally prepare that you're going to be success. So I'm going to start off with something really simple. Mentally preparing means that you got you to voice that and say, I am going to be a college graduate. Ready? I am going to be a college graduate. So you got to mentally prepare. So I am going to be, okay, y'all got to work on this, a college graduate, right? You got you to mentally prepare. You can't just say, I'm going to wake up and say, I'm going to be a college graduate every day. Because the fact of the matter is, there's no secrets to success. It's a result of preparation, hard work, and here's the last one. This is the one I, I like to hear, learning from failure. How many people have failed in life? Good, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Everybody's failed. I failed. But you got to learn from it. We're going to talk about that. But you got to mentally prepare yourself. I'm going to be a college graduate. I'm going to be a Lone Star Tumball college graduate. Because sometimes you're going to run into this. What do y'all see? A brick wall. Meet my best friend. This is my, BF, this is my, my BFF. Or have my students say my BFA. This is my BFA. Yeah, you're gagging. I'm BFA, right? I run into this every day. And guess what? You were running to brick walls and fail, right? How many people have run into a brick wall and fail, right? But here's the thing. Here's where I break it down for you. Failing is the first attempt in learning. How are you learning from your mistakes? Don't repeat the same mistakes. Don't repeat the same mistakes and think that, why am I not getting any better? How are you going to learn from that? We're going to talk about that in a moment. We're going to talk about that in a moment because you need to recognize that, hey, so how do you prepare for your future? Here's your first homework assignment. All right? Number one, what are some of the mistakes you've done as a student? What are some of the mistakes you've done as a student? So we'll start thinking about learn from your mistakes. I'm going to tell you something of mine. Procrastination. That's, my, that's like my second befa. Me and procrastination, we like bed buddies. We hang out together, right? Procrastination, trying to do too much. You need to understand what mistakes you're making so that you don't keep making them again and again. Once you start knowing the enemy, you can start fighting the enemy, right? You got to understand your limits. What are your limits? How much time do you have? How much money do you have? How many people play video games? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, raise your hand. Yeah. What are your limits? Let me ask you a quick question about limits. Sleep. Sleep. How many people had a good night's sleep last night? 
Raise your hand if you had a good night's sleep. Only one person, two people, three. How many people had a bad night's sleep? Like, y'all, did, y'all tossed and turned. All right, that's everybody, okay? I feel more comfortable now knowing, right, that everybody had a bad night's sleep. I did. I didn't sleep well last night because I didn't know my limits. Sometimes you need to know what your limits are. I need to get to bed. I need to take care of myself. I need to embrace humility, meaning that being humble knowing that you can't do it all by yourself. There's a lot of Latino pride in this room and a lot of Latinos that end up saying, I was never told to say that I can't do it. I was just told, just suck it up, right? I was told, just suck it up, just suck it up. Don't ask for help. Latinos, the research clearly points out, Latino students are less likely to ask for help. They just want Latino males, you really don't ask for help. Machismo. You know, I know what machismo is. The women are like, yeah, I know machismo. I know machismo all too well, right? Machismo gets in the way for asking help, help-seeking behavior. You got to embrace humility and realize when you're drowning. But more importantly, when you're preparing, you got to be patient. You can't do it overnight. It's a journey. When I was talking to students about this, a lot of people don't recognize there's no such thing as a two-year degree. It's a three-year degree plan. I didn't finish my undergrad in four years. I don't know who they're lying to. Who are they lying to? Four years? Are you kidding me? It took me five because I was working three jobs. I had to work over the summer because I couldn't pay for my books. What are you talking about? My parents paid zero. They couldn't afford it. So be patient when you plan out your future. Right? So that's your first homework. So leverage your resources. This is the second one. Leverage your resources. Right? Your familia. Your friends. All right. So here's the thing about friends. How many people have friends? Raise your hand. Okay, that, that was a trick question, right? right good. Everybody has friends. Good, right? Here's the thing. My mom and dad would tell me this all the time. Me, te me digas con quien andas? Y te digo quien eres. Y'all like, y'all like, we're about to repeat that like it was Bible verse or something. <laughs> y'all were like, why did, why did my parents say that? And what in the English version is what? Tell me who you hang out with, and I'll tell you who you are. Does that, does that ring? Anybody, their parents ever tell them that? Raise your hand. Come on now. Yeah. My parents would tell me that all the time. And back then, I was like, what you talking about? You don't know what you, old man, you don't know what you, Papi, you don't know what you're talking about. Mommy, come on. Your friends are the people who are going to college. Your friends are the people who are college graduates. Don't hang out with people who don't go to college and give you pressure. Say, why are you in college? Why are you wasting your time? Raise your hand. Have any friends tell them that. Why are you in college? Why are you wasting your time? Why don't you get a job? Come on. I'm making good money. Who are your friends? And what are they telling you? What are they whispering in your ear? What chatter are they giving you? And do you want that to be your message about being a college graduate? Staff, Magdalena Martinez is a Tomball graduate, and she's a staff member here to help. Who are the staff members who are going to help you? Who are they? Who are the professors that you need to rely on? We're going to talk about this. We're going to break it down in the homework in a minute. And who are your mentors? We're going to talk about mentors in a minute as well. So I'm kind of give you a big picture. I want to show you this picture because when you see this picture, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? That's beautiful, right? I use this picture to re- reflect one thing. All of us are on a journey to reach our mountain. And you can't reach the mountain by yourself. You can't reach the top of the mountain by yourself. You can't do it. It's not possible. It takes an entire community to help you. Family, friends, staff, professors, mentors. So what are, who are your resources? So if you're going to climb this mountain, this is the mountain that you're going to climb, what are your resources? So here's your homework assignment. Make a list. Make a list of the people that you trust. 
familia, because you're going to have some tios that are crazy. Why are y'all laughing? <laughs> y'all going to have some tios that are crazy. Some tios that think you need to be doing other stuff. Right? Make a list of familia. Make a list of friends. Make a list. Start making a list now of professors. Y'all taking classes right now, taking a professor. Which professors are, are, are you feel like you got a connection with? Get to know those professors. Reach out to them. Find out who they are. And discuss your plan. And last time I checked, what's your plan? I, I, I am going to be, going to be a, a college, college graduate. graduate. So when you meet with them and you discuss your plan, you're going to say, I want to be a college graduate. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? You got to respect your resources. You got to respect the people that you're going to be talking to. Don't waste their time. They're busy just like you are. Respect them. That's something that Latino community has a very strong cultural value, cultural capital about that. And then finally, use them wisely. Use your resources wisely. Know who to talk to about what. If you're having trouble, who do you reach out to? Use them wisely. Don't, don't abuse the people that are trying to help you because then they're going to get burnt out and say, I don't want to be dealing with you. Right? Find out who they are. Make a list. Reach out to them. Tell them your plan. I want to be a college graduate. And tell them, help me. But listen, you can have, you can be prepared. You can have your resources. And you can do everything. But you got to commit to action. Remember I said it has to be daily? You got to do it daily? The fact of the matter is, you got to have a sense of purpose. So, I like to do this. I like the sticky notes. On a sticky note in your bathroom, I want you to put the month and the year you plan to graduate. And that's all you need to put. And I want you to look at it every day when you brush your teeth. Do y'all brush your teeth? Okay, I just want to make sure. Y'all do brush your teeth. All right, okay, good. All right. Every time you brush your teeth, on that, on that mirror, I want you to put the month and the year that you're going to graduate. And I want you to keep that as your purpose. Does that make sense? Because if you can't dream it and you can't make it, it's not going to be real. So that's your homework. I need you to put, with a sense of purpose, when you're going to graduate. Because I need you to focus every day on that target date. You need to focus on it and say to yourself, I am going to graduate in May 2018. Boom. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to take action every day because I'm, my, I'm going to have intention. And I'm going to be, and here's what it boils down to, I'm going to be purposeful and intentional to graduate in May 2018. And I'm going to do it every day. Every day I brush my teeth, I'm going to write it down. That's what the pen is for. I'm going to write it down and put it on a post-it note and say, this is when I'm going to graduate. Let me ask you a question. How many people already have that date in their mind when they want to graduate? And if you don't, you need to find it. You need to talk to Magdalena. You need to talk to the staff. And you need to find out what that day is. I worked as an academic advisor for many, many years before I was a professor. And I work with students developing an academic plan. And I'm a big, big fan of that. I'm a big fan of having plans. Because if you don't plan it, it don't come true. It doesn't happen by accident. So if you know what day it is and what month it is, I mean, what month and what year, you need to put that up. You need to put that out there. You need to show yourself, I'm going to take action to that. Because sometimes you're going to be looking at this. The weeds, right? How many people are in the weeds sometimes in life, right? I've been there. I'm in the weeds all the time, right? So you got to be specific. You got to be specific so you don't get lost in the weeds about, if I'm going to graduate in May 2018, I need to make sure that I have this class taken in, in, in the spring of 2018, and I need to get this class. I need to make sure that I get at least a, a B in that class. You got to be clear. That's what the B means, right? You got to be focused on that, 
on that class. I've got to take this class on this day, and I've got to make sure. And I've got to develop a timeline. Like I said, if it's May 2018 or if it's May 2019, you've got to plan it out semester for semester so that you know that you have a plan and that you're staying on track. Because at the end of the day, you're going to tell your mentors who are going to hold you accountable. Your mentors are going to hold you accountable to your action plan. That makes sense? They're going to hold you accountable. Because sometimes you're going to be here. This is 290 in Houston right now. Or I was just driving here. What's that, 249? That is, y'all, y'all are, that, that is crazy what's happening out in front of this campus. All the traffic and all that, the police officer told you, you can't turn here, you got to go here, right? Make time every day. Time. Every day. And y'all love, I love this picture because this picture says a lot. Why? Because here's what happens when you have to make time. Time means that you have to find your road. Are you on the right road to the degree that you want? Are you in the right major? Are you? Find your road. Make sure that you say May 2018, you know exactly where you're headed. Find your road. Then when you find your road, y'all going to know this one a lot, stay in your lane. How many people have friends that don't stay in their lanes? And end up, chismosa, whatever you want to call it, they're all in your business, and then no, you need to stay in your lane and stay out of my way, right? Stay in your lane. Fact of the matter is, you got to go at your own pace. You can't finish it in two years, then finish it in three, but finish. Stay in your lane, go at your own pace. Use the rest stops. In other words, know when to slow down and take your time and not feel like you have to rush if it's not working. I'm going to say something that's very, 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 very challenging. Sometimes you got to drop a class. How many people ever dropped a class? I've dropped a class. No shame in that. But use those wise ones. If you're having to do too much, drop a class. If it's too much, drop a class. You will run into detours. And when you run into detours, what do you do? Do you give up? No. You figure it out and you go from there. You will run into detours. And then finally, you got to know your destination. You got to know where you're headed. Don't forget that you're trying to get to a degree. So you got to know where you're headed. And so you must learn to make your own path and make every day count. Listen, you can't make someone else's choices. You shouldn't let someone else make yours. What's your choice? What's your choice right now, today? What are you choosing today that you've, you've already told me already once? What's the choice you're making today? That you're going to be a what? A college graduate. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Because there are a lot of people that told me, I don't think you're going to graduate from college. I don't think you're capable. There are going to be a lot of haters that will tell you what you should do. You must have greater personal responsibility for your life choices. You must actively create your own path and be brave. Here it is. Be brave to follow it because you have amazing potential and no one can make that decision for you. You are amazing. All of you are amazing. And all of you have potential. But it all begins with you. So homework number four for time. Here we go. Make a time and learn about yourself. Here's the thing I'm going to ask you. What are the things, like we talked about earlier, knowing yourself, what are the things that procrastination, what are the things that are slowing you down? What are those? What are your time wasters? Instagram? Pinterest? Ooh, Pinterest. Right? Twitter? Y'all could tweet, y'all could tweet about me, right? That's okay. Right? Video games, what are those? Make time for creating positive mentoring relationships. Make time for that. Make time to love yourself. 
We want to beat ourselves up. And I'm going to tell you right now, I want you to love yourself and, and, and believe in yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, who's going to love you? Does that make sense? If you don't love yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to love you? But you got to love you. You got to make time to love yourself. That means you go to bed on time. That means you eat right. That means you take care of business. You do what you need to do. But make time to lead your life. In other words, you can't do this part time. You got to make time every day to lead your life. You can't take time off. Take time to love yourself and take time to make yourself a priority. But at the end, the last one, and we're done. You must never give up. Never give up. End is not the end. In fact, the end actually means effort never dies. Your effort never dies if you keep on pushing. I like to talk about this. If you're in the hustle, you're never going to give up. Y'all are a strong generation. Y'all are a strong community. People say, man, you are hardworking. Yeah, because my parents still work. Martha and Luis, my mom and dad still work. Making, my mom makes cakes. She made all the wedding cakes for all of her three kids. She still makes cakes for weddings and all that. In fact, next time I give this presentation, I'm going to show you the cakes that she makes. Amazing, the cakes that she makes. And she does everything from memory. All the cake recipes, you know, all that stuff for memory. So I know my mom, who's 77 years old, if she's hustling, what does that say about me? Effort never dies. So number four, find your purpose. What's your purpose? Is it to graduate from Tumbaugh and go to a four-year institution? Find your purpose. Know your mentors. Here's what I want you to do. Remember I told you to make a list? I need you to identify three mentors. Three mentors, okay? I want three mentors that you believe you can trust. Who are the three people that you trust to help you become a college graduate? Time is precious. We're not promised tomorrow. But you gotta make your action plan and you gotta follow through. On that, on that post-it note, you're going to say, I'm going to graduate May 2018. And then finally, you're not alone. Look around you. Look in this room. Look at the people who are here. Look at the people who you're going to trust. You're not alone. Look at Magdalena. Look at the, the, the staff that are here, the professors that are here. You're not alone. Lone Star Tumball is committed to your success. I'm about to give a talk at 2 o'clock to the professors. And I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to tell them, look, I just spent an hour with a bunch of students. And they're fired up. So what are you going to do to make sure that you keep them to be successful? What are you going to do? You can't make someone else's choices. So you should let someone make yours. I keep reminding you, make a choice to be a college graduate. Find people who love you. Love yourself and make sure that you do what you need to do to be successful. I'm telling you right now, I am so honored and so proud of you that you are here this afternoon talking to me about this. Because what I want for you more than anything is to be a college graduate. Because I know when you're a college graduate, you'll have opportunities that you never ever imagined in your life. Because when you start looking at the big picture, we need you. I need everyone in this room to be a college graduate. When I give this talk, I'm going to give a talk similar to this in Ohio next week. And I'm going to talk about this. And I'm going to tell them, look, y'all need to graduate. And I'm going to tell you in Texas, y'all need to graduate. And you got to work and do hard work to make it happen. It's not easy. You're not promised it to be easy. But the fact that you're here, the fact that you have kind of like a little game plan today after talking to me, I feel like you got a chance. It's my hope. You can tweet about it. It's my hope that you learn something today about what you need to do. If anything, at least you get fired up. All right? If anything, at least you got fired up. Because I've tried to keep it real about what you need to do. 
Because there's no magic formula other than me just telling you, you can do it. Si se puede. My responsibility is to show you that a Latino kid from Cuba who came to this country with nothing became a professor and got to meet the president. No way I thought that would be me. I hope that I've inspired you this afternoon to be a college graduate as well. Thank you very much.